Sabello's Caledonia 5 is a new endeavour for a brand that's history has been pretty much been totally focused on racing, be that with the lightweight R-series bikes, Aero Road S-series or the TT and Tri-Focus P-series bikes. The Caledonia isn't aimed purely at racers, though it does have UECI certification. No, it's aimed at endurance riders and aimed squarely as competition for bikes like Giants Defy, Cannondale Synapse, Trex Damani and Specialized Roubaix. But this being Cervelo, the Caledonia was never going to be a relaxed cruiser and the bike will be available to their Jumbo Visma team riders for races like the One Day Classic. We got 21 bikes for 2021 in prices ranging from £1,770 up to almost twelve grand. We tested them against the challenging backdrop of the pandemic, global component shortages and high bike demand and that's not mentioned in Brexit. Me and the test team have put a lot of hours riding, testing and zoom discussing the bikes we've been sent and the Savella Caledonia has stood out from the rest winning the endurance bike category for 2021. Finally, don't forget to like, subscribe and click the bell icon. Now let's get on with the video. The bike we tested was the £6,600 Ortegra Di2 equipped model and though it's by no means the most expensive Caledonia option, it's certainly not cheap. It is well equipped though with Ortegra Di2, reserve 32 carbon wheels, carbon bar, post, neat integrated stem and quality tyres and saddle. The bike actually takes its inspiration from the R3 Mud designed back in 2011 and 2012 for the classics and the bike that won the 2013 Paris-Roubaix underneath Johan van Summeren. That bike had big tyre clearances for the time at 30mm, but the Caledonia in contrast has 35mm and more compliance in the chassis than the standard R3. The Caledonia 5 takes that idea of adding more compliance to the frame as well as extra stiffness where it's needed, which is usually at the head tube and the bottom bracket. In fact, it has the same stiffness figures here as their Aspero gravel bike and the R-Series. Where the differences are, are with the compliance in the seat stays and the seat tube being increased. Cervelo have really considered the end user of the Caledonia, especially those that share a similar climate to Toronto, where the Caledonia gets its name from a road infamous to local riders for its poor condition and the tough surface, not to mention some very changeable weather. The details are the inclusion of removable mudguard mounts. These neat additions to the through axle caps integrate threaded bosses for full length guards and a removable bridge for the seat stays. The aero fork is also drilled for a guard mount on the crown. This along with a rear light mount that replaces the bottom section of the saddle rail clamp are both very, very well thought out additions that give the Caledonia year round ride appeal without compromise. Like any Cervelo, aerodynamics are at the core of the bike. Every tube shape comes from Cervelo's extensive tube library of aero shapes that combine wind cheating properties, balance with weight and stiffness, or compliance. Even the use of two position bottle bosses on the down tube are a nod to the brand's aero bikes. If you're running two bottles between the seat and down tube, you can line them up to minimize aero drag. Cervelo's internally cable rooted bar and stem further reduces elements exposed to the air and the teardrop shaped spaces under the stem are a split design which makes it easy to adjust the bar height without having to disconnect brake hoses or wires. That makes it an easy bike to pack to travel with too, whenever we'll get a chance to do that again. The geometry also differs from current Cervelo's in being more about providing stable and smooth handling rather than the sharp reactions of the R-Series. That means relaxing the head angle slightly to 72 degrees with a 50mm fork offset compared to the R-Series which has a 73 degree head and 45mm offset. Which means the Caledonia gets a trail figure of 57mm on a 25mm tyre, rising to 60mm on a 30mm tyre. The trail figure comes from a combination between head tube angle and fork offset and tyre size. This measure shows the tyre's contact point trailing behind the steering axis. A small measure of trail makes for a fast handling bike, more trail slows down the steering response. In context, a 57mm trail is the same as a very race orientated bikes like Cannondale Super 6 Evo, whereas 60mm is more akin to an endurance bike or even a gravel machine. The seat angle remains at a regular steep 73 degrees, whilst the chain stays run out to a longer 415mm. In comparison, Cervelo R5 has a 410mm chain stays. Weight-wise, the Caledonia 5 comes in at 936 grams for the frame and 370 grams for the fork. That's a finished, painted, hardware-fitted 56 centimeter size frame. Our test bike comes with a 5236 chain set combined with a wide 1134 cassette, Cervelo's AB09 carbon bar, Pro Logo Dimension Saddle, 
D-shaped Cervelo carbon post and the new Reserve 32 carbon wheel set. That's from the recently launched Reserve brand, which itself is a combination between Cervelo and Mountain Bike Supremo Santa Cruz. These are shod with 30mm Vittoria Rubino Pro TLR tyres and our 58cm test bike weighs in at 8.62 kilos. The Reserve 32 wheels are, as the name suggests, 32mm deep, are tubeless ready and have a broad 24mm internal width, which we're told is optimum for tyres between 30 and 45mm. Luckily, the Caledonia comes fitted with 30s. The Caledonia is undoubtedly a great looking bike. The integration of the cables through the ABO 9 bar on the Cervelo stem keeps the front end looking as clean as possible, as clean as an aero bike, as does the smoothly interlocking frame and fork. On the road, the Caledonia feels like a Cervelo. The rigid feel of the frame under load makes it as responsive as an S-Series bike. In fact, the whole experience feels very close to the S3 I tested as part of 2020's Bike of the Year test. That means that the Caledonia accelerates with ease and it feels race bike responsive, just like an S3. It's better for most of us though, as the composure gleaned from the bike's smooth ride and the bigger volume tires makes this a brilliant bike to descend quickly on. Safe in the knowledge that it doesn't get unsettled or flustered by rough road surfaces, and you have the backup and control of Shimano's excellent Ortega brakes with the quiet Icetec rotors help you control speed and slow you down, without drama or noise. These are all significant advantages over the S3 or the R-Series bikes for most non-racing riders. Firstly, there's the big volume tyres that along with the frame with a nice level of compliance at the rear end combined with a quality carbon bar that helps null road vibrations up front that all add up to a superbly smooth ride even on really poor road surfaces. Cervelo, however, don't seem to be able to fully commit to the pure endurance arena as the Ortega Di2 pairing of a Pro Compact 5236 chainset with an endurance friendly 1134 cassette attests to. It does mean that you have a fast chain gang ready set of gears at the taller end and low enough gears for a solo ascent on steep slopes. We do talk about this a lot at Bike Radar, but of course with the electronic shifting of Di2, you get accurate, efficient gear shifts every time with little to worry about when it comes to cable maintenance and the woes of internal cable routing messing with the shifting accuracy. All you need to do is remember to charge the battery a few times a year. I love this bike. It's a brilliant endurance bike that's as exciting as a race bike to ride. What I didn't like so much is that it ships with tubeless wheels and tires, but with inner tubes in place. Now that's fine until you get a puncture as the combination of these tires and tubes was thumb breakingly tight, which meant an infuriating roadside repair episode and me converting the wheels to full tubeless as soon as I got home. Now, the other issue is price. This is something that's been compounded this year with global shortages and a myriad of other reasons. At £6,610, the 5 isn't cheap by any standards. Yes, it's very, very well equipped and you won't need to change a thing by setting up those tyres properly, but it's still a pricey bike and one that's seen an £800 rise since its launch. If you can live without Di2, then the Ortega model is cheaper at £5,589 and it has the same carbon wheels and kit. Or there's the standard Caledonia, which has a slightly different frame. It uses a round seat post rather than the D-shaped post, and it has a slightly different fork. The standard Caledonia frame is 1,031 grams and a fork 432 grams, which is cheaper still at 4,789 pounds for the Ortegra Di2 model, or 3,879 pounds for Ortegra. Overall though, it's a stunner and deserving of our Endurance Bike of the Year title. It retains Cervelo's racing heritage intact, but brings big ride comfort. It might not be the bike that Cervelo fans lust after, but I reckon it's the Cervelo most fans of the brand, me included, should be riding. So what do you think about the Cervelo Caledonia? Is it not enough endurance bike, too much endurance bike for the brand? Let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the little bell icon so you get a notification every time we upload a new video.